call on stage our first keynote speaker. She's an artist par excellence, best known for her complex drawing practices. She was one of 70 artists selected to be a part of B70, the historical 70th anniversary birthday of uh, Amitabh Bachchan in Mumbai. In 2008, her painting, Firelight, was featured on ABN Singapore. Her works have been collected by institutions such as Singapore Art Museum, BMW, Deutsche Bank. She is Ms. Parvati Nair, writer-artist, part of DLC Visual Arts Committee, and will conduct our first DLC talk in Chennai. Welcome, Parvati. Hello, good evening, and thank you all for being here and for listening to me this evening. I do appreciate it. Can art talk about corporate brand and corporate culture? And it was a question that got me to think, because you would think that the two things are so far apart, creativity and art and the corporate world. But then I thought, well, isn't that, in a sense, what DLC is trying to do, to bring together people from different parts of the world, from different straters of society, from different creative streams to see where the synergies and the creativity lie. Now, I believe art is crucial for any society because of the things that art can do. It can provoke, it can educate, it can entertain, it can decorate, it can transform, and it can create empathy. So for these reasons, I think, why can't the corporate world harness what art has to offer to talk about their culture and their brand. And now here is one of the greatest brand ambassadors that there is in India. He's a brand entirely onto himself. And for his 70th birthday, his wife had an exhibition of 70 Indian artists, 70 Indian contemporary artists, as a way to talk about his life and his achievements. So here was perhaps India's greatest brand in the world of entertainment harnessing what art could do to talk about who he was and what he stood for. Now, where the corporate world is concerned, obviously, the easiest and most direct way to harness what art can do is the art on the walls. And there we're talking about first impressions. Of course, you mustn't judge a book by the cover, but tell me, don't we all do it every single day, all the time? So when somebody enters a corporate office, whether it is a client, a potential client, um, a potential employee, how do they feel in the space? What do they see? How are they feeling? And that's when the first impressions of this company or this corporate space, or indeed a corporate home, if it's somebody who does a lot of corporate entertaining at home, begins. So this is a work that of mine that was installed in a corporate space that you know did talk about humanity, the human influence, as well as you know the technical part of life. So. The messaging that is being given there in this space is crucial to how you assess the space that you're in. It might be subliminal, you may not be doing it consciously, but believe me, everybody does this. And the other thing that we come to is then use this strategically. What does art do? Art is about communicating. Why do I make a work of art? It's not just to stay in my studio. I want to communicate something to you, communicate something about the world, the environment, things you don't know about. So it's very interesting if you can use that communication strategically. Now, this is a work of mine that's in the Bombay airport. The Bombay airport could have decided it was just going to be an airport like nothing else. But instead, there is the Jehe program, which makes it a gigantic work of public art. So this is a work of mine that is actually sort of, you know, it's 20 feet high. But on this four-storied wall, it looks really small. It looks like it always belonged there. But here is how a work of art has transformed what you would think of as just a place where people come and go in transit to a place where people stop and look at what is going on. And you know, to reinforce what I'm just saying, this is a very old term that everybody who's ever been in advertising or been connected to advertising knows the medium is the message, and indeed, this is true about art. What kind of art are you going to put there? You know, this was a commission that I did for BMW. And yes, you would recognize the shape of it. 
But it was also a collaborative exercise where I went on to the, you know, the automotive floor to look at what was there. I was able to then put together, there is, you know, the explosion of fluid there, of, you know, automotive fluid, as well as subliminal elements of a heart strings. And in the center, in the center, we talked a lot. And then finally, we've put an image of the sun because we were talking about different kinds of energy and power. So the message that was there, I'm not a mouthpiece for the company, but it was a collaborative effort that pre, you know, created something that you know, was a bit of both and something that I think gave us both a lot of pleasure to see. And that was installed in the, you know, in the company. And this is just to give you uh, an idea of the scale of the work. Now, this is all sort of within, you know, company walls, within your home. But you can also think about how a corporate and the creative world can come together outside of the walls of a home or an office. And that is by supporting the creative economy with things like I just said, the commission, you know, the artistic commission is a great way to engage with the creative world and to support the creative world. This is a work that is in uh, a large office in Ahmedabad. And it's again, it's a 20 foot long work. And again, it was commissioned as a way to allow me to go into the city. And the shape of the artwork is actually the Sabarmati River. And from there, I've created uh, an artwork. Here is a detail from it. It's a three dimensional drawing. Uh, most of what I do is drawings. It's very, very detailed pencil drawings. And then to that, sometimes I add color. This is another work in the same office, which is actually a pillar of salt, again, deriving from the Sabarmati Ashram and, you know, Gandhiji's famous salt march. So these were commissions and possibilities that would not have happened had the corporate not invited me to their city and said, go walk the city and see what inspires you. So that has produced different kinds of art. It's continued what I've always wanted to do but it's allowed it to grow and flower in different ways. The other way of art outside the walls is, you know, through collaborations with, obviously with the artist. And this is something I always say when you're talking to biennales and art programs and residencies, don't forget the single individual artist that is there because we are the ones that need the support through all these various platforms. And in doing so, you're actually supporting a certain kind of creative influx into the city and the country in which you live. This was another commission from the Chennai Mathematical Institute, which I put myself there only for scale. It's not, to, it's not for anything else. And this was a 30-foot long work where, again, the Mathematical Institute in Chennai invited me to talk to them about different aspects of maths, and in this case, maths and music, because this was a kind of concert hall where they were going to invite people to sing and speak and all these different kinds of things, just to show you the scale of the work. Now, we all know about CSR and it's, it's a terrific thing. It's, it's great, but why not, in, why not change one of the alphabets in that and think of the corporate engagement as being CCR to sort of bring culture into this corporate social responsibility. Why not corporate cultural responsibility? Because as we say, culture is what empowers, it brings people together. It talks across divides, it talks across languages, it talks across people from different worlds. So this is a soapbox that I do like, but if there was a way that the corporates could see how empowering culture would be a great way to empower their brand and their communication, then I think everybody benefits from this. And for this, I'm just going to give you an example of uh, a work that I did, which was made out of trash. So the media was very kind, and I had a lot of very funny phone calls saying, Parvati, do you really want blue and white trash? And I said, yes, I do actually. And it was possible because the Alliance Frances supported this cause, and we had these big blue and white pins where people from houses, so this was all household trash. So it was like a community project in which all these households were complicit. You were complicit in the trash that was created and that you were giving me to create something else. 
And this is what I created, a giant wave, a 12 foot high wave that, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It was an homage to this famous wave image that you've seen. And if you look into your handphones, it is still the only work of art that has its own little icon, its own little emoji. So I created this wave out of trash, contributed by the people of Chennai. And through, you know, one of its walks, there were many, many students, about three, four hundred students whom I took them through, you know, the creation of this to, you know, to experience this work. And we had a whole notice board where, you know, the students would come and put up their impressions and their thoughts and their feelings, their responses to this work of art, which sort of then brings me to what it is that art can do. Um, you know, you have news stories, you have broadcasts, you have so many ways of communicating a message. But art doesn't tell you what to do. None of us really like being told what to do, right? I mean, whether it's the child who was there or us as an adult, we want to feel that the ideas come from us. And here's where art can help, whether it's your corporate message, your CSR message, because art doesn't proclaim you must do this. It proposes, it suggests, it says maybe there's another way of looking at the world. So I didn't tell the children who came to see the wave of trash that we're drowning in a wave of trash. I showed it to them. Thank you. Thank you.